What's up Beyonders, James here and in this video we return to Skybound's Transformers. I would greatly appreciate it if you would smash that like button. Let me tell you all now, the things we'll see in this video is Shockwave continuing to be the vicious devil he is, RC's dark side, and Ultra Magnus restored. Let's get into it. So this opens with Beachcomber on his futuristic surfboard, which is pretty cool. He witnesses Shockwave and Soundwave's space bridge in combination with their feeder, sucking up all of the ocean and ocean life up to Cybertron. Not only transferring more of Cybertron into Earth's orbit, but also giving the Decepticons a huge supply of Energon. After Beachcomber investigates it, he informs Spike of what's happening. What's crazy to me is Beachcomber plans on just leaving, because he gives Astro Train a container of Energon to keep him going until the Decepticons find him, and this becomes even more clear when Spike asks him what they should do. Beachcomber answers that war, violence, and killing won't help anything. As they're leaving through the woods, they come across a deer. This reminds Spike of when Optimus first stepped foot on the planet and saw just how fragile life is on Earth. Spike tells Beachcomber he knows how he feels. Fighting feels wrong, but he can't run away from this fight. He has to do something. Meanwhile, Arcee speaks to an unconscious Ultra Magnus on the Ark, and she's overwhelmed with guilt over his current state. She explains to him how he saved her. When she was alone, clanless, and helpless, he found her and showed her the Autobot way. She swears to him that she would have never left Cybertron if she knew he was still alive. Alita One interrupts, putting her bitter two cents in, telling RC it doesn't matter. She made her choice and abandoned the cause. But before she can finish her sentence, RC punches her right in the face and replies, you don't know me. RC gives Alita this look that says, talk again and I'm laying you out. Carly asks what happened to Magnus, and RC reveals that he was held prisoner and tortured by Shockwave for hundreds of years, and mentions more than likely the same thing is being done to Jazz and Cliffjumper as they speak. This horrifies Carly. Optimus asks Wheeljack about the status of Magnus's repairs, and Wheeljack answers he cannot repair Ultra Magnus fully without Ratchet, and informs Optimus if they decide to use Energon, it would use up all the Energon they got from the dam. He suggests that they keep him in his current state and revive more Autobots instead. But Magnus awakens and interrupts their conversation, pleading with Optimus that he wants to fight. On the Nemesis, as Shockwave is about to leave to Cybertron to check on his fortress, Soundwave asks him if he could travel back with him so he can use Cybertronian tech to repair Ravage. This is why Soundwave is the father of the year. He's been trying to repair Ravage for multiple issues now. However, Shockwave gets pissed and answers that he needs to focus on the task at hand and reflect on his priorities. When Shockwave returns to Cybertron, the Combaticons greet him and ask if they can go to Earth and about repairing Onslaught and Brawl. We see Shockwave, like Soundwave, rules with an iron fist when he answers, Silence dogs, don't concern yourself with such matters. Shouldn't you be defending the fortress? Our Energon readings will be spiking the Autobot sensors. Prepare for assault. They know what power we wield now, and what beautiful power it is. On the arc, Wheeljack informs Optimus that Shockwave's space bridge bringing Cybertron is connected between the Nemesis and his fortress, using that to drain life from Earth into Energon stores in his fortress, so he can use those stores to wipe out the remaining Autobots and fully conquer Cybertron. He deduces that if they can destroy the Nemesis, they can cut that connection off. But even if they do, Shockwave already has enough Energon to achieve his goals on Cybertron. Alita mentions that Shockwave not having enough Energon is what's helped the Autobots on Cybertron survive for this long. Carly interrupts, reminding all of the Autobots that their first priority should be rescuing Cliffjumper and Jazz. Optimus agrees. However, Alita becomes enraged and her bitterness, resentment, and pain rises to the surface. She criticizes Optimus for only thinking about the Autobots here on Earth and not the ones on Cybertron who have been grounded to death in this war ever since he left. The same war he began. How for countless years she's been the one in the trenches, losing everything and everyone. That he has no idea how bad it's become on Cybertron. Optimus argues that Cliffjumper and Jazz are the ones in immediate danger, and so is Earth. He is confident in their abilities, 
and in the abilities of their old friends on Cybertron. From here we go to RC preparing for the Autobots assault, and she is pissed. She calls the Decepticons animals, and mentions how she can't believe what they did to Magnus. She says they don't deserve to exist. Carly responds to all this by reminding RC of her speech about not being driven by hate and vengeance. Alita enters the room, making it clear she's not here to fight, and tells RC it's good to see that that fire within her is still there, and that warriors like her is what they'll need to end this fight. Later, as Optimus is thinking about Ratchet, Alita approaches. Optimus brings up his heated conversation with Ratchet back in issue 4 when he used the Matrix to save Spike. Remember, like Alita right now, Ratchet didn't like that Optimus was putting the needs of Earth and humans before their own. In that conversation, he told Optimus he was too concerned with Earth, especially when humans don't deserve that concern, since in his eyes, we are a race prone to anger and destruction. One of the things I liked about that conversation that I didn't mention in that video because I didn't think about it until afterwards, Optimus had given him the same response to that that he gave to Ironhide in Michael Bay's first Transformers movie, that Transformers are not so different from humans. Alita tells Optimus they have their own problems, and he agrees. However, Optimus says he is starting to believe for the Autobots to survive, they need the humans and Earth. When Alita assumes their plan of attack is to charge the Nemesis head on, Optimus reveals that isn't their plan at all, that Skywarp is their plan of attack. He is allowing them to use his teleportation ability. So Skywarp repairing Wheeljack after RC saved him wasn't a one-off. It seems like he has created a truce with the Autobots and is getting payback for what Soundwave and Starscream did to him. Wheeljack informs Optimus that he has constructed the charges he asked for and coded them to trigger on his keypad and that once he and Magnus are ready, they'll join them. Aboard the Nemesis, Shockwave is torturing Jazz and Cliffjumper. Jazz though is proving to be more resilient than he thought, so he decides to turn his attention to Cliffjumper. He grabs this drill, and just as he's about to drill into Cliffjumper's optic, the Autobots pop up right behind him. As Optimus frees Cliffjumper and Jazz, Alita tells him she finished planning the charges. This is where we get more of Arcee's dark side. She's got Shockwave up against the wall with a blaster to his head, threatening to execute him. But Optimus stops her, reminding her of how far she's come and to not lose herself to that path of hate again. Shockwave takes advantage of her distraction and straight up roundhouses her in the back. He takes Cliffjumper hostage and runs, calling on his Decepticons. The Autobots chase after him. Soundwave and the Constructicons appear, and Shockwave orders the Combiners to combine. The Constructicons combine and transform into Devastator. Alita sees this and thinks they are screwed, but Optimus assures her, even though they're facing a Combiner, he isn't worried because they have backup. At that moment, Wheeljack and Ultra Magnus fully restored appear. They are locked, loaded, and ready to kick some Decepticon butt. However, when Magnus comes face to face with Shockwave, he freezes and drops his blaster. He ends up transforming and running away from the battlefield while saying, I can. Shockwave laughs and says, I broke his mind and now I shall break your bodies. Holy hell, the Autobots are in trouble. That's the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out the Energon Universe playlist right here to get caught up on everything so far. Other than that, have an awesome day and always remember every day to go beyond.